Okay. Next up, we've got Xander Mackey, a father, husband, and security researcher who is, quote, driven by a relentless need to figure out how things work, uh, which is, I think, a trait that many of us uh, share and, and can associate with. Today, uh, Xander's going to be exploring Azure Policy Service and how it can be used for badness. The title of his talk is Who Policies, Who Polices, oh, it's a tongue twister, Who Polices Your Policies? Please give a warm welcome for Xander. Um, hey everyone, thanks for coming. It's a real pleasure to be here, a real honor. Um, I want to thank the organizers, and I also want to thank Nick Frechette, and Katie Knowles, and Zach Allen, who are colleagues of mine who supported me in doing a lot of this research and gave me some good mentorship, so. Um, okay, so quick agenda. We're gonna talk about what the Azure Policy Service is, and then we're gonna talk about how you can abuse it with something called an effect, and then how you can escalate your privileges using this service. Um, if you want to leave, this is basically the talk right here. Um, <laughs> no, um, okay, so before I go further, I should say that like this isn't something I invented. Like this is actually in the Microsoft um, threat matrix. Um, but as you can see, there's not a lot of detail. It just sort of just says, okay, stuff can happen if you mess around with this service and. I actually only discovered this after I had done all the research. <laughs> Someone pointed out to me, you should probably check Microsoft first before you do that. But um, what, the value I think I bring here is that I'm, I'm sort of filling out the picture here, because this is really opaque. It's like, if you don't know what the service is or what you can do with it, this doesn't really tell you very much. Okay, so um, what is the Azure Policy Service? Has anyone used this service? Yeah, I'm sorry guys. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, so basically it is the compliance service um, that can also do remediation. So, sounds kind of boring, right? Compliance is, you know, everyone's favorite thing. Um, no, not mine. Um, the, the remediation part is the part that caught my attention and why I sort of dug further. Um, so, at a high level, the components of this service are a policy definition, which is basically the conditions for validating a resource. Does it comply with these conditions? And if it doesn't, what do we do if this, if this non-compliance happens? Um, then there's a policy assignment, which is when you attach a definition to a scope. A scope is sort of a thing in Azure where you can, it's like a, a resource boundary, sort of. Um, and in order for policies to cause things to happen, they need what's called a managed identity, which has a role. A managed identity, if you're not familiar with it in Azure, is basically like a service account. Um, and then there's another thing called a policy initiative, which is a bunch of policy definitions. Um, and that might be expressing something like, you know, HIPAA or the CIS framework or whatever, like, yeah. So a definition looks like this. Um, they're actually written in JSON, but I put it in YAML because it's easier to read, I think. The top, you know, they, we have the parameters that you can parameterize it, but then the policy rule is the, the, meat, and, the meat of it. Um, you have this if, right? If something is out of compliance, then do X. It's pretty self-explanatory. So this is an example of one. Um, this one is just saying, okay, if the, the resources don't have the department tag, deny, and what that deny does is it doesn't let you make that resource. Um, so this is happening in the loop of resource creation. Um, this is a sort of confusing diagram, but roughly speaking, these are, these are how all these things fit together. Um, you know, the policy definition on the bottom left is assigned. It might get a managed identity, top left. And the managed identity would have a role assigned to it. And then if you have a bunch of policy definitions, um, you have an initiative. Okay, so yeah, what do you do with it? Okay, you can audit stuff, like you can have it in this auditing thing where it just can tell you, okay, this stuff is non-compliant. You can deny things, like I mentioned, uh, which doesn't let you build the resources. And um, Microsoft packages a lot of their kind of security guidance in the form of policy initiatives, and they also provide a lot of built-in compliance frameworks in the form of initiatives. So if you are doing compliance in Azure, it's a really useful service, actually. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of power and there's a lot of pre-made stuff there for you to lean on. 
Um, but you know, that's not why we're here to talk about compliance. There's more, more fun stuff. Um, you can, yeah, you can misuse it. So there's this this piece of a policy definition called an effect, which lets you do things like append data to your deployment configuration. Um, you can also modify that deployment configuration. And it can deploy other resources as a side effect of that. And this is all like, if a resource isn't, isn't compliant, oh, by the way, I want you to you know, deploy a database. I don't know why you would need to do that, but you know. Um, and then at the end, yeah, we'll talk about how you can use these things to effectively escalate your privileges. So OK, um, these are some of the things you can do with these effects. Right? You can append things like SSH keys to a VM. Um, you can create backdoors in VMs. You can assign roles um, through this service. Um, so this append action is actually pretty interesting because it, it, even though it's doing stuff, even though it's modifying state, it does not require a role. So in other words, it doesn't require any permissions. Um, and this is how you find all the properties that are modifiable via append, and there's a lot. <laughs> and um, Microsoft does take requests on their GitHub, so if you want more stuff to screw around with, you can, you can ask them. Um, okay, so this would be an append policy. Basically, this is saying um, if these things on the top, basically if, it, if these tags exist on this virtual machine, append my SSH key to the public keys of this VM. This one is opening an ACL in a network security group. Um, you know, someone deploys something that's locked down, but you don't want it to be locked down. You can just punch a hole in it. Um, this one is the what I mentioned, the adding stuff that deploy if not exists. Um, so Microsoft's VMs have this thing called a VM extension, and one of them is basically arbitrary code, and it's a bash. Um, shell so you can um, put in commands to, uh, to execute when the machine boots up. Um, okay, here's another one. It'll just make every blob storage account that you have that you're trying to make private, it'll just make them all public. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can do if you want to you know, kind of break the service. Um, you know, that's some of, the, some of the bad stuff you can do. What, are, what is this privilege escalation thing I talked about? Um, okay, so the, the role that has the ability to create and modify these, these policy definitions is called resource policy contributor. Um, that, that role is not allowed to assign roles. It's not allowed to do you know, identity and permissioning. It's only allowed to create these policies. Um, user access admin or contributor, these people can bind identities and roles. So let's say Bob just has resource policy contributor. That means he can't, uh, he can't escalate his privileges himself. He can't change his permissions himself. Alice would be able to do that. But, okay, sorry, this is getting a little tangled here. Um, okay, so sorry for the diagram here. So let's say Alice initially creates a policy definition um, binds it, adds a managed identity, and then that managed identity is able to do things via the policy. Um, and say that managed identity has very high privileges. In the case of Bob, who can't do anything with identities, Bob, who's able to, man who's able to modify policies, can alter the definition, the thing that was originally used to create the assignment, and that will modify all of the assignments. So he can modify the underlying resource and it'll do entirely new things. Um, at the level of the initiative, you can even get more tricky because initiatives, remember, are a bundle of policy definitions. Um, and you could, all of those you know, bad policies I showed you before, you could add them onto an existing initiative, even if you didn't have the ability to create any of the role assignments. Um, and if that initiative had highly privileged roles, well, you've just gotten all of its permissions. Now, um, according to Microsoft, this isn't really privilege escalation. It's like intended to do that, which is, yeah, it's, argu it's arguable, it's true. Um, 
but I just thought it was interesting that a role that seems so anodyne, you know, like resource policy computer, who's going to be auditing that person? Well, it turns out they can really wreak a lot of havoc if, if you get a hold of that. Um, so, yeah, this is the Azure Policy Service. It's used for compliance, you can abuse it for almost anything, and you can ever escalate your privileges with it. Um, I have a little more time, so I'm going to show you this. this is, yeah. The Olympics are going on. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the backstory of how I did, how this, you know, came about, basically. Um, so yeah, I work at Datadog, and one of our cloud security researchers, Nick Frechette, who I don't know if you know him or not, you probably do, he sort of sponsored a, a, like a hack week at work. Like, okay, let's go try to break some cloud services, and you know, I'd never really done anything like that before, and you know, I was like, well, what do I do? You know, do I have to do all this crazy you know, stuff? I'm not a pen tester. And he was like, well, just, just go read the docs, like, you know, for the thing. Um, so <laughs> I spent five days, you know, reading docs for the service and playing around with it. And on the fifth day, I was like, wait a second. You're telling me that this compliance framework thing can, can alter resources. It's basically like a CSPM that with remediation and, you know, it sort of has like Terraform built into it. Um, that wasn't really on the tin. That's kind of weird. You know, so then I started playing around with it for three or four more months and, you know, trying to understand the intended use of the service, but then also what, what would happen if I got a hold of these permissions, these roles, and um, I wanted to do bad stuff. So, you know, the, the moral of the story here is like, you too can do cool research, um, just read the docs. So, um, that was a short talk. Um, any questions? Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm super deaf. He's asking if the slides are being released. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. The slides are being released. That was the question. Are the slides being released? Yes. And I also wrote uh, a blog post about this on the Datadog security blog. I didn't put a link on here, stupidly, but it's up on our blog. Um, so if you want to read about a little more of the details, including stuff about what you might do as a defender to sort of audit for this and what events you want to care about in blogs um, for this stuff. So, um, any more questions? Sweet. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Andrew. We're going to um, get quite the line as usual.